we have been talking about the great plan of God to make us free. The freedom in Christ. Tonight, we will continue to look at another area of freedom. So when we study the word of God, I request all of you to open the Bible. When Bhavin is reading, read with him silently. Bhavin will read now, Revelation 1 verse 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who hear the words of the prophecy and heed the things which are written in it, for the time is near. Blessed is he who reads, listens, and obeys. So remember, read the word of God as you listen to it. The Lord says, Woe unto you, many times. He says, woe unto you. But there is a blindness and bondage in which people say it is a blessing. The Lord says, woe unto you. But these people say it's a blessing. So it must be a blindness and a bondage. The Lord says, Blessed are you. Same people say it is foolishness, not practical. These people do not want to receive eyesight, neither do they want to be made free from slavery. I will explain this. You examine your life. The condition of the Lavadation Church. We read that in third chapter of Revelation. The Lavadation Church, the Spirit of God is writing to the elder of the church and to the members that they are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. But what are they saying? They believed they are and claimed they are rich and have become wealthy and have need of nothing. Listen very carefully. The Lord says this and even today there are a lot of people who do not agree with God who do not agree with God. Others can keep your video shut. It will be helpful for, from distraction. Is this not a willful blindness? Joyful slavery to Satan. They're in a lukewarm stage. But this stage is completely unacceptable to God. And he wants them, I will like to reject you, spit you out of my mouth. Spit you out of my mouth. There are many churches and Christians in these churches who live in this same blindness and bondage. They refuse to accept their miserable condition. Can we not apply the proverb to these people? The dog has turned to its vomitus, the swine to the mare. What do you call this? They, we call it planned entanglement, but they call it 
blessed engagement with the world. Truly it is planned entanglement. Entangling is not accidental. It's very planned, like braiding the hair. One over the other. But they say it is blessed engagement with the world. Listen to the condition of these people. And when we read that, do not move it off to somebody else. Is it my own life? Is it my own life? Ephesians 4.18. Ephesians 4.18 being darkened in their understanding, excluded from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardness of their heart. 19. And they, having become callous, have given themselves over sensuality for the practice of every kind of impurity with greediness. Who being fast feeling, they have lost all feelings now. Those who listen to me, some of you are, some many of us are able to read these passages without any feeling. Without any feeling. It's like a doctor not many doctors, few doctors who read certain reports of patients, very serious reports have come. They read it as if it is nothing, but they can't read it if it is their own report, if it is their own report. So, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. There is a cold silence of purposeful disobedience. They don't argue. They don't discuss this matter. They don't reply. They're very silent. Silent like stone. It can be called as cold silence of purposeful disobedience. The Lord asked Pharisees certain questions. Even though they knew the answer, their condition, they came back and said, We do not know. We do not know. Another occasion when they were caught by the answer that he gave, they became silent. They became silent. Yes, it disturbs us, but we remain silent without anything, without doing anything. No one can wake up a pretending sleeper. No one can wake up a pretending sleep. A hibernating lazy people. They're enjoying the blindness and slavery. Romans 1, 21. Look at the condition. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. And they call themselves wise, but they have become fools, foolish. And they were darkened in their conscience. What did so? They cannot be woken up, they cannot be stirred, they cannot be moved. So what does God do? 124. Therefore, God gave them over in the lust of their hearts to impurity, 
so that their bodies would be dishonored among them. Therefore, God also gave them up. To read that sad phrase in 26 and 28, God giving up. The greatest punishment that God can give to a man is not to punish. Not to punish. You go your way and perish. They have accepted the unacceptable lifestyle. Have you accepted the unacceptable lifestyle? They say, we will go with the majority. It seems good to us now. But do not neglect the word of God. It says in Luke 12, 35 and 36. Luke 12, 35 and 36. When the Lord looks at this stubbornness, look at this blindness, look at, look at this slavery, what does he say? Be dressed in readiness and keep your lamps lit. Be like men who are waiting for the master. No. When... John 12, 35 and 36. So Jesus said to them, for a little while longer, the light is among you. Walk while you have the light so that darkness will not overtake you. He who walks in the darkness does not know where he goes. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become sons of light. Luke 13, 34. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those sent to her, how often I wanted to gather you, gather your children together, just as a hand gathers her brood under her wings, and you would not have it. You would not have it. What is the previous verse? Nevertheless, I must journey on today and tomorrow and the next day, for it cannot be that a prophet would perish outside of Jerusalem. Yes. Later we read, looking at the condition, the hardness of the heart of the people, the Lord wept over Jerusalem. The Lord wept over Jerusalem. Even today, love of God cannot see his own children perishing in judgment. He is weeping. The prophets of God were weeping for God. Jeremiah is called a prophet. Weeping prophet. The Lord is waiting to bless. Isaiah 30 verse 19. A very important verse. The Lord is waiting. O people in Zion, inhabitant in Jerusalem, you will weep no longer. He will surely be gracious to you at the sound of your cry. When he hears it, he will answer you. Is it 30, 30, Yes. 18, you read. Therefore, the Lord longs to be gracious to you, and therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you. For the Lord... He waits, waits, he waits, he waits, he waits. Peter writes, the delay in his coming back is not because he has forgotten his promises, but he is waiting that some more people will be saved from the wrath of God. Are we misunderstanding this? Are we misunderstanding? <clears throat> but unwillingness is hindering God. Our unwillingness is hindering God. He is weeping over the inevitable destruction that will happen. Holiness cannot accept unholiness. Light cannot live with 
darkness. When one is rejected into the outer darkness, there is only weeping and gnashing of teeth, which the Lord repeatedly reminded. In the outer darkness, there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. Oh, weeping over, it could have been done. It could have been corrected. I lost it, I lost it, I lost the opportunity. How blindly they are choosing the destructive path. The Lord says, is my arm shortened that I cannot help you? Is my ear hard, I mean, deaf that I cannot listen to your prayer? Read from Isaiah 59, 1 and 2. Behold, the Lord's hand is not so short that it cannot save, nor is his ear so dull that it cannot hear. But your iniquities have made a separation between you and your God. And your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he does not hear. See, it is not that he is not able. He honors our free will and he is waiting. But our unwillingness is preventing. Your sins, your unrepentance, you are not repenting, you are not turning back. This is hindering me from helping you. Tonight, as you listen to the words, look at your own will, willful choice. Look at your own willful choice, please. It's not accidental. Don't say, I did not know it. You knew when you choose. We will study from two passages from Luke 6. First, we will read from Luke 6, 20 to 23. And turning his gaze towards his disciples, he began to say, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who hunger now, for you shall be satisfied. Blessed are you who weep now, for you shall laugh. Blessed are you when men, when men hate you and ostracize you and insult you and scorn your name as evil for the sake of the Son of Man. Be glad in that day and leap for joy, for behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way, the fathers used to treat the prophets. Now, the Lord says, blessed are you. The Lord says, this is my way. He says, this is the kingdom value. This is part of the abundant life. Even if I know all this, I do not want to choose this way. What do I choose? What do many people choose? Luke 6, 24 to 26. But woe to you who are rich, for you are receiving your comfort in full. Woe to you who are well fed now, for you shall be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall moan and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for their fathers used to treat the false prophets in the same way. Lord declares woe unto you. Listen, Lord declares woe unto you, these people. He says, this is not my way. He says, this is the value system of the world and the devil. It's a broad way. It leads to destruction. Even if I know all this, do I choose this way? Do I choose this way? The Lord tells in John 3, 19 and 20.
this is the judgment that the light has come into the world and man loved the darkness rather than the light for their deeds were evil for everyone who does evil hates the light and does not come to the light for fear that his deeds will be exposed it's not accidental it's a purposeful choice light does come the values of the kingdom are explained and given but many have chosen the wrong things darkness what is judgment judgment is not imposed on anyone <clears throat> here he says you have chosen your own judgment i want and i have decided to perish in the darkness i love it otherwise why are we running around when he has made us free to come to the light there was a time when we were under the bondage of evil one when we could not come when we even if we wanted now the work of the satan has been destroyed the bondage is broken he has made us free then why don't we come in old testament they will always tell we will run to egypt find help from the pharaoh king of the egypt modern days we say we will run to the world find help from the prince of the world blind bound but bold and proud blind bound but bold and proud it's not because we did not know not because we did not understand not because that it is not taught everything has been done but because of bold rebellion we insist in going in our own way don't say it is accidental these people insist in going in their own way they want to have freedom of course wrong we have studied it to make their own choices to claim their own rights is it not blindness and bondage but very attractive on that side what is unacceptable to god has become acceptable to people of god have we accepted the unacceptable and say there is no other way listen listen we have reasons for accepting this one his way is difficult the disciple said on that day it is hard teaching who can take it second it's not practical what is not practical is teaching why i cannot continue to do what i do practical is to continue what i am doing what everybody is doing brothers and sisters you cannot do that so they say it is not practical they say majority have taken that away and this the majority must be right they all cannot be wrong but the lord's word says the way to destruction is broad and many walk in it the way to life is narrow and only very few find it stubborn determined enslaved blinded heart has become callous skin has become thick neck has become stiff prophet jeremiah often called out people and said you have become stiff neck people you have made your forehead like bronze you do not know how to blush even if when i say that you are a war lost all sensitivity there is no fear there is only pseudo peace and pseudo satisfaction this gives you works as a pain killer
before the final inevitable calamity happened, the Lord is calling us and say, listen to me, listen, listen, listen. Let there be the work of God to convict, produce godly sorrow. It may lead to deep repentance and restitution. God created man in his image. Adam was only innocent at that time. Innocence is not knowing any sin. Adam did not know innocent, uh, sin. He is the only person who was ever innocent. God is holy. He knows what is sin, will not do that. Holiness is freedom not to sin, but overcame it, overcomes it. The Lord overcame all temptations. In him there was no sin. In God's plan, God wanted Adam also to become holy like him. So, choice is given. The fruit that gives knowledge of good and evil. Do not eat, God said. The day you eat, you will die. Because Adam had freedom to eat or not to eat, it is given to you. Make your choice, enabled by God. If only he would have believed God's word, he would have overcome sin, and would have become holy Adam. And he could have lived with God forever and ever. But the saddest, but, this is the greatest but, saddest but in human history. But Adam sinned. Did not believe in God. He believed what Satan said, you will surely not die. Is it the same problem of unbelief still continuing in human life? How easy it is to believe the teachings of the world? How difficult it is to believe and obey God's word? Even for Christians, even now, The Holy Spirit is continuing to convict the world of this great sin. What is that sin? John 16, 8 and 9. And he, when he comes, will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin, because they do not believe in me. Yes. Sin is not believing God. Sins come out of this sin. The Holy Spirit will convict the world of sin. He is the only person who can convict any man or woman of sin in him. If you grieve him, if you quench him, if you continue to disobey him, he may stop reminding, he may stop convicting, and that person will never be able to confess his sin, realize his sin, repent and turn to God. <clears throat> that is a sin unto death. Sin unto death. And John writes, if you know that, do not pray for them. There is no use in praying. And you can see many people who have become so callous in their heart that they cannot be healed now. They cannot be taught. But if anyone of you, you are able to confess and return. Remember, God is still merciful. You are listening to the Holy Spirit. Please, immediately respond without any delay. This time may not come again. 
Now is the time of salvation. Do not receive the grace of God in vain. Now is the time. When you prayed, when you asked, he said, I have heard you and helped you. The help is here now. <clears throat> he also shows what is righteousness and what is the consequence of disobedience, inevitable judgment. That's the work of the Holy Spirit that is continuing. God did everything needed to defeat Satan and destroy the work of Satan and to make man free from Satan's way and bondage. 1 John 3, 5 and 6. 1 John 3, 5 and 6. You know that he appeared in order to take away sins, and he, in him there is no sin. No one who abides in him sins. No one who sins has seen him or knows him. Eighth verse. The one who practices sin is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. The Son of God appeared for this purpose, to destroy the works of the devil. He completed the work and is inviting us. He honors our free will. He won't crash inside us. How to live this life of freedom? He teaches clearly. He gives freedom from wrong beliefs, value systems, principles, and lifestyle. He is inviting. John 8.34 and Mark 8.34. And he summoned the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. This is the most important teaching of Christ, central teaching of Christ. So he wanted everyone to listen. He summoned all the crowd and the disciples to him and said, the Lord of this universe is standing before man and standing. If anyone wishes to follow. He commands the stars and nature, but before man he stands and invites. Dear ones, are you listening to this invitation from this God of universe? Remember, invitation from the King of Kings is a commandment. If you disobey the commandment, the inevitable judgment cannot be avoided. Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, another invitation. Come to me, all who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke when, upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. See, the Lord of this universe is inviting, come. Now, why do you pray, help me to come? If you're still... Open, knocking at the door of our house, the guest is the host of the house is opening and telling, Please come in. And you're standing there and telling, Please help me to come in. It looks very ridiculous. Food is kept before you. You're saying, Help me to eat. Like that, when he invites you to come, you can come. But if you don't want to come, what can be done? Isaiah 55, 2. Why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. He repeats this Listen, listen, 
listen, listen, in the verse 1. John 10, 10th verse, second part, he says, I have come that you may have life and life in abundance. I've come to give you. Do you want it? Luke 19, 10, he says, I came to seek and save those who are lost. Seek and save. We are gone on our own will. He comes to seek and see. Are you willing? If you are drowning, you don't know how to swim, you're gagging, you're shouting, you're splashing. Somebody who knows swimming comes to you and says, I come to save you. Will you tell him, I don't want you. I will do what I want. Look at the pitiable state in which we are. The Savior has come. And we don't want his ways. So he started to teach about God's kingdom, its values and principles, because the conformity with the world was so prevalent, the whole world was under the control of Satan. They did not know what is kingdom of God. So he had to begin with the beginnings. This is the kingdom value. This is the principle of the kingdom. This is the way of the kingdom. So he was teaching the kingdom values in Luke 6, 20 to 26, comparing it to the worldly values. So he had to teach them and show them by living it out. He trained 12 of them in the kingdom way they were sent out into the world. And we have heard the gospel first. Those who want to enter the kingdom of God need to remind themselves and pray for God's help. What should they pray and remind? Three things. Father, your name must be glorified. Father's kingdom must come. Father's will must be done. His name, his kingdom, his will. It is in place of the old rebellious way. Instead of my name, my kingdom, my will. This has to become our prayer. You cannot pray to have your own way. They pray amiss to spend the answer in their lust and God says, I am not going to listen to it. Listen to it. And we need to remind ourselves, kingdom, power and glory belongs to God forever and ever. I need to be careful not to fall into the rebellious ways again to discern after my kingdom, my power, and my glory. Needs to be continuously reminded. I need to be continuously delivered from this temptation. That's why we pray, deliver me. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver me from this. Deliver me. What is the temptation? to take hold of kingdom, power, and glory, to climb the ladder. So, when he completed the work of salvation on the cross, all that he tells us, confess with your name, mouth, that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Not the devil, not you, but confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord and believe in your heart that I have been crucified with him, buried with him, and raised up with him. It's no more I, but Christ who is living in me. You can note down these verses and read it later. Romans 10, 9. Romans 6, 5. Isaiah 57, 15. We'll read now Matthew 7, 21. Matthew 7 and 21. 
not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father who is in heaven will enter remember this is why he taught what is the will of the father we know but we go on asking how to know the will of god what has been revealed in the word of god we are not doing but we want to know the will in some other matter which is our own convenience and comfort that is self centered will that is not god's will at all but the enemy is still active he is the prince of the world he is the father of lies his plan is still steal kill and destroy his teaching is spread throughout the earth so the lord began his teaching about the difference between the kingdom of god and the worldly systems so we read that luke 6 20 to 23 kingdom way luke 6 24 to 26 world's way i'll explain a little bit blessed are those who are poor woe unto those who are rich i you woe unto those who are poor da blessed are those who are rich 2000 years later these kingdom values have not been accepted into churches we still believe something different we still believe something all of us listening to this have you accepted this value system into your life now you may ask why the lord says who are into the rich who is rich i have some verses become rich by external measures riches of the world or a person is called rich by the external standards first peter 3 and 3 braiding of hair costly apparel jewels it's all external you measure a person on the external and say he is rich who is ruled by enslaved by riches no one can serve two masters what will happen read from matthew 624 no one can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or he will be devoted to one and despise the other you cannot serve god and wealth by the way we have no say we have no time for god it shows that we have despised god and neglect him because you have time for everything you want to do but you don't have time for god means christians have already despised god because all the time is taken by the money master so who is rich who is ruled by and enslaved by riches he who stores for himself is rich luke 12:21 luke 12:21 and 21 so is the man who stores up treasures for himself and is not rich toward god yes he talks about a rich man earlier and he says he who is not rich toward god in his relationship with god but is rich toward himself with riches he is a rich man he who is not satisfied in god but he is satisfied in riches first timothy 6:5 they think godliness is a means of gain because the gain is more important than god they are satisfied with what they have than by whom what who gives it or who enables you to work trusting in it and becoming proud of it first timothy 6:17 the warning to the riches let them not trust in the riches and become conceited read that first timothy 6:17 please instruct those who are rich in the, in this present world not to be conceited or to fix their hope on the uncertainty of riches but on god who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy 
two warnings are there. Those who have become, those who started trusting in it, and those who are proud of it. Believe riches is the basis of life. That man is rich. Luke 12, 15. Beware of all forms of covetousness. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. But this rich man thinks abundance of possession is basis of life, so he has covetousness and become rich. Luke 16, 14. Now the Pharisees who were lovers of money were listening to all these things and were scoffing at him. <laughs> the Lord said, no one can serve two masters. Lovers of money, they started making fun of him, scoffed at him, derided him. Hey, this fool says nobody can serve. We are managing it very well. Remember, remember, many, I heard many of us say, many people saying this, we are managing well, why, why can't we have, why can't we serve both? You may manage it well, soon it will manage. Now, why does he say woe unto you? Why does he say woe unto you? They have already received their comfort, consolation. That he plainly tells what you wanted, you have it now. What are you going to have? Nothing. Read from Luke 16, 19th verse. There's a rich man who enjoyed everything. Now there was a rich man. And he has, and he habitually dressed in purple and fine linen, joyously living in splendor every day. In one sentence, the Lord described it, this rich man. That's all here. In 24th verse, we read about his agony. That's another matter. The Lord saw this man here and there and gave the clarity to us. Do we listen to this? Woe unto you, if you have only that. Second reason, they are satisfied with what is abomination to God. What is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So the Lord says, you have collected all this, you have amassed all this to buy these abominations. Woe unto you. You are gathering what is abomination. Are you listening? What are you gathering? What are you collecting? What are you buying? And the Lord told the rich and ruler, because of what you have, woe unto you are not going to enter in the kingdom of God. Matthew, Luke 18, 24. And Jesus looked at him and said, how hard it is for those who are wealthy to enter the kingdom of God. Look at this. He has everything but cannot enter now. Woe unto him. Woe unto him. I call this spiritual diabetes sometimes. Poverty in abundance. Complete poverty in abundance. They are cursed by God. Jeremiah 17 five and six. Thus says the Lord, cursed is the man who trusts in mankind and makes flesh his strength and whose heart turns away from the Lord. For he will be like a bush in the desert and will not see when prosperity comes but will live in stony vestis in the wilderness, a land of salt without inhabitant. You will fly over some other desert areas in Middle East. Years and years you fly, 20 years you fly, you will see the shrub standing there like that. It won't grow like a shrub there. They are cursed by God who trusted in God. 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 10 list a lot of reasons why God will call woe unto you. Can you read that 6, 9 and 10? 1 Timothy. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a snare and many foolish 
and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction for the love of money is a root of all sorts of evil and some by longing for it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs so much is given about danger now about the covid virus only few sentences are written about the danger but look at the precaution people are taking how carefully they run away and enter the room and close themselves want to won't get out won't look at any man what how careful you are what about this sin root of all evil which kills and destroys people they deviate from faith and pierce themselves with many sorrows they are instead all return but if you go after this is it not blindness they are controlled the lord taught about this wealth as uh, 90% of the teaching in new testament is about the dangers of this wealth and even though we know it is dangerous stuff they are embracing and happy with that the lord says who and to you snake venom is useful but nobody embraces snakes and sleeps x ray is useful but you use a remote control and use x ray but here people who run after it and the lord says who and to you are we listening the other side he says blessed are the poor blessed are the poor why what is the blessedness in poverty there is no external value system to measure it it is internal in first peter 3 4 when you read the internal standards but let it be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable quality of a gentle and quiet spirit which is precious in the sight of god gentle and quiet spirit the lord said learn from me these two have nature qualities of mind you will have rest for your souls are they not blessed people who have found rest because they have chosen that path the trust is god for them jeremiah 17 7 and 8 in contrast to 6 5 and 6 this is 7 and 8 jeremiah blessed is the man who trusts in the lord and whose trust is the lord for he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes but its leaves will be green and it will not be anxious in a year of drought nor cease to yield fruit <laughs> whose trust is god you are trusting in god to get what you want that is one aspect okay but the second aspect is the trust is god what not god not what god provides the trust is god that man is a blessed man is really poor to the world oh where why do you have what do you what where is where is things to show you show to others you don't have anything they will still call you poor in the world's measurement he is poor he doesn't have any of those abominations oh you don't have that you don't have this yes sir i don't carry abominations i don't gather abomination oh fool fool yes i think to boast jeremiah 923 boast not in riches boast not in wisdom boast not in strength but boast that you know me they boast in that the lord says you blessed are you nothing to trust does not want anything else god is his trust blessed is that person 
He has learned to be content. He has learned to be content. Philippians 4, 12 and 13. Philippians 4, 12 and 13. I know how to get along with humble means, and I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both of having abundance and suffering need. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. 13th verse is connected to 12th verse. Do not separate it and use it in any other occasion. This is the truth. To remain content because I am satisfied with Christ. In him, I am complete, so I am satisfied. So, why majority say we do not want this blessing? It is not blessing, it's a curse, they say. That's blindness. Are they blind, bound? Bold? Have they become fools before God? Why they choose bondage? Why they remain in blindness? But continue to say, John 8 33. John 8 and 33. They answered him. We are Abraham's descendants and, and have never yet been enslaved to anyone. How is it that you say you will become free? Ah, this is the thinking. Look at the word is so important for our own life even to the same word. Christians, we go on saying, why are you calling we are slaves, we are blind? No, we are God's children. We are not been enslaved. For years they have been under the slave of Babylon and now they are under the enslaved by Romans. Still they say we are not slaves. This is the kind of thinking people can have. Positive thinking. I'll, we'll stop here. The rest of this blessing and we'll look at it next time. But why did we study this? When you go back, please look at all these verses. Sit quietly, even this night itself. Am I living in willful bondage and blindness? Even after seeing this, do you remember 13th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, 15th verse says, can you read that? Matthew 13, verse 15. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears, they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they would see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return, and I would heal them. The Pharisees came and asked, Are we also blind? The Lord said, see, because you claim that you see, your sin remains. If you're blind, you are not had sin. We say we see it, but remain in bondage. Time is running out. Will you turn to the Lord and ask you to deliver from this? You would have not been here if that desire is not created in your heart. The desire is created. We want to be free. We want to be free. We want to enjoy that freedom. You don't want to remain blind. You want to see. Shall we pray? Oh, loving Heavenly Father. You stood before Jerusalem and wept, looking at the blindness of people, 
looking at the willful disobedience, the unwillingness. Lord, I pray for my dear brothers and sisters, all those who listen. Oh Lord, there may be deep work of God in their lives. Their eyes will be open to see what you want them to see. And Lord, run out of this bondage and blindness into light and to freedom. O oh Lord, if they are united with you in the death like this, they'll be united with you in the resurrected life. Let them consider themselves, count themselves, dead to sin and alive to Christ. O oh Lord, you have opened the door. You have opened the prison doors. Let each one walk into that freedom. O oh Lord, live in that freedom. Be not yoked with the unbelievers, the worldly way. Do not be conformed to this world. Lord, I pray that you will deliver. You will do that. You will do that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this time. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen.